So what is two-way and intermediate switching? Well, it's where you can switch a light on from three or more positions. You might have a long corridor, for example, or a hallway. And you want to switch the light on at the beginning of the corridor, the end of the corridor, and in the middle. But you can add as many intermediate switches as you want. So you can switch a light on from multiple positions. As you can see here, if you need more switching, you can just add more intermediate switches. You can add as many as you want. These are the two-way switches and intermediate switches that we'll be using. The switch in this position is generally considered off. When it's flicked over, it'll be on. When all the switches are in the off position, the light should be off. When all the switches are on the on position, the light should be on. You will have the switching in different positions though, depending on the combination of switching that you have. But anyway, the two-way switch, in the first position, which is the off position, the power goes from the common to one. That's sometimes known as L1. This can be common L1, L2, or sometimes it's one, two, three. But when the switch is off, the connection is between common and one. And when we go to the second position, the switch is on, the power goes from common to two. With the intermediate switch, these can be labeled differently. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four. With the switch in the off position, position one, power goes from one to one and two to two. In position two, the on position, it's crossed over. The power goes from one to two, crosses over the switch, and from two to one. These connections in the switch don't touch each other. So that's how the switches actually operate. That's the flow of power through the switch. There's a couple of ways we can get power to our lighting circuits. We can either get power to the ceiling rows and drop a cable down to the switch. And that cable will have a permanent live and a switch live. There will be no neutrals at the switch in this situation. And this is before the strappers have been installed. So this is the power from the ceiling rows. Power comes in from the consumer unit and down into the switch. And to make the light come on, we need to energize this connection here. Or we can bring power to the switch. The cable goes from the consumer unit into the switch. And so we have our permanent live at the switch. We have our neutral. And the cable going to the ceiling rows this has got our switch live in neutral. We'll join the neutral in the switch. We never switch to neutral. So they're the connections when we bring power to the switch. Again, this is before the strappers have been installed. This is how we connect up our two-way and intermediate switching. I've simplified the power. It's actually going to the ceiling rows, but I brought the power straight through. The power comes in. To connection two here and the switch live comes out the switch and up to the ceiling rows and the light on connection one so we have a permanent live and we have our switch live we have to connect our strappers the strappers are really simple in domestic the strappers will be three core and earth cable and the colors are brown black and gray abg i like to take brown to common black to l1 and gray to l2 People use various different combinations of colours here, but what's important is that you've got the sleeve with brown, the black and the grey, so people know that these are live conductors. And so the connections are really straightforward. We have our two-way switches either end, and our intermediate in the middle. I like to take the brown to the common. We run that through the intermediate where we join it with the connector block, and we take that to the common in the second two-way switch with the black. I connect that to one in the two-way switch, and it goes to this connection one here in the intermediate switch, and the grey goes to two in the two-way switch, and two in the intermediate switch. So coming at the top here, don't go across the switch, bring your connection into the top, then the bottom two connections in the intermediate switch, we take the black conductor from one in the intermediate to one in the second two-way switch, and the grey in the intermediate from two, to two in the two-way switch. So as long as you've got your blacks connected to one, and your greys connected to two, and your brown connected to commons, you're going to be good. It's important to remember to sleeve your conductors. These conductors coming into the switch here, this will be a twin in earth, and the conductor colours are brown and blue. And this can cause confusion, because this blue conductor is a switch live cable. It's not a neutral conductor. And it has to be sleeved brown so people know it's a live conductor. 
people sometimes get confused because you can get neutrals at the switch when you bring power to the switch. In this scenario, the neutral is coming from the ceiling rolls to the lamp. So this conductor is not a neutral. It's a switch live conductor. You let your permanent live into the switch and you switch live out. This switch live is what actually switches on the lamp. So it's important to remember to sleeve these conductors and also sleeve your strappers with a little bit of brown sleeving. And it's no hard to put some brown sleeving on your common connection as well if you wanted to. Sometimes when you've got lots of conductors, you've got a multi-gang switch. It helps to know which are the permanent lives and which are switch lines. And there's no set rules on which colours you use to go to which connections. These are the colours I like to use, BPG. Some people might use the black for the common, for example. Again, it's important that you sleeve them. But what I would suggest, though, whichever way you like to connect your strappers up, stick with it. It'll make it so much easier to keep changing your mind every time you do lighting. You've always got to keep checking what you've done at the other switches. But if you stick with it, it'll just make it so much easier when you're connecting up your switching. So we're going to go through the flow of power now through the three switches in the various different positions the switches can be in. This is just an example here. This is all the switches in the off position. So the light should be off. But obviously there's still power coming to the switch because we have a permanent live. And there are connections from that permanent live coming off the first two-way switch. Connection two here. And that will make this connection here in the intermediate switch. That's always going to be live. And depending on the position of this switching, there's going to be a connection in the final two-way switch, which is always going to be live as well. It's either going to be one or two, depending on the switching here. So you have got live connections in every switch, even when all the switches are off. What it means is, though, that permanent live has not made it all the way around all the switching and got to this connection here and got to the switch live connection, which goes up to the lamp. So let's go through the various combinations. Okay, so this is a switching on in the off position, off position one. It'll follow the flow of power. Power comes in the first switch. Can't get the common. Goes along the grey wire through the intermediate switch and into the second two way switch. You can see the power can't get any further. Can't get across there. The light is off. Okay, we switch the first switch on. Let's follow the flow of power. Comes into the first switch. We'll go to the common first, this comes along here, through the switch, through the intermediate, and all, all the way to this position here. Once this connection here gets energised, this light will be on, so the light is on. Let's just go the other way as well, down, down two. As you can see there, there's no connection there, but it's getting energised by the common that way. Okay, we switch the intermediate switch on now. This one's still on. We follow the flow of power into the switch. You can go both ways. We'll go the common first, down here, through the second two way switch, through the intermediate. Now that's just going back to the live connection. So we've got a loop there, but it's not getting to the light. Let's follow the other way, down the grey wire, goes through the switch, crosses over, back up. As you can see, we've got a loop there. We're not getting to this connection here, so the light is off. This time we walk to the third switch, and we switch this one on, so all the switches are on. Let's follow the flow of power. Comes in to the common. Through the second two way switch, through the intermediate, and yes, the switch is on, the light is on. There we go. We'll go the other way, on the grey. That's not making, that's not making connection, but the light is on. Okay, so we've got to check all the configurations because the light might switch on and off in certain positions. But if you've got the wiring wrong, the light will sometimes stay on or it sometimes won't go off. So now we walk back to the Intermediate switch and we switch this off. So the switching is on, off, on. Let's follow the flow power. There we go. Go to the common first. The intermediate. Yeah, we just got that loop again going back to the MCB. And the other way, through the grey. And we go. There we go with the loop. Not getting to this connection here. The light is off. Okay, now we've switched the first switch off. 
So the switching was off, off, on. Let's follow the flow power. We go around. There's no connection to common this way, this time. We can only go this way. Power comes around. Through the two way switch. Back through here. And onto the light. And there we go. We've got the flow power on the circuit and the light is on. Right, the next configuration is off, on, on. Let's follow the flow power. And get that way. Goes to the intermediate, crosses over. Can't get anything that way, so it's not going to get to here. So the light is not going to be on. Right, this is the eighth and final combination of switching. When you've got three switches like this, there's eight different positions the light can be in. So you want to check through them all to make sure your lighting is working correctly. And as you can see, the light is going to be on. Let's follow the flow of power. Can't get to the common, but it's going through two on the grey. Through the intermediate where it's crossed over. Through the common. Back to the first switch and onto the light. The light is on. So that is the eight positions for your intermediate switching. Here's an example of incorrectly wired strappers. What I've done is I've taken the strappers from the two-way switch. I've taken the strappers across the switch, not in at the top and out at the bottom. So we've got to one and one and two and two. So with this switch in the off position, let's see what happens. This switch is on, so power will come in. It's going to go through two. Going to go straight through the switch and onto the light. Okay, that's working, that's okay. When we switch this switch off though, it should switch off the light, shouldn't it? But it's not going to, because look, that power is still going to be going through straight through the switch, and that light will always be on. So flicking this switch won't make any difference. So there's an example of incorrectly wired strappers. And it's why you've got to check all the different permutations, because if this switch was on, for example, you might get normal switching. When one switch is in one position, all of a sudden the light won't come on or the light won't switch off when you press the other switches. You start getting weird things happening. So as you've seen, the strappers in the wrong positions are going to cause problems. The light will stay on but the light won't go off. But you'll also notice that the wiring is really simple. Nothing too complex about it. It is possible to make mistakes or get things mixed up. Especially when you've got a multi-gang switch and you've got lots of cables. But just going through things logically, you'll be able to solve any wiring issues that you might come across. This might be something you've installed, you've made a mistake, or more often than not, you've got to somebody's house and had problems for years. Never worked correctly. And you get it sorted in five minutes, you know. Because you know how it works, you know how the switching works, and you know where the strappers are supposed to go. Here's a diagram of another way you can connect your intermediate switching. This is the two-wire method. It's got a few different names, sometimes known as the conduit method or the cable-saving method. So you could connect it all up this way as well. That might help you out. So two-way and intermediate is not that complicated to wire, but sometimes you like to have a bit of a practice. And you can easily do that. Get yourself a couple of two-way switches and an intermediate and a multimeter and a multifunction tester, something that shows continuity. And you can wire this all up and test it perfectly safe because you don't have to energize it. You don't actually have to make a light come on. If you get a connection between a permanent live and switch live with your continuity meter, you can work out if your switching is correct or not. So it's a good way to practice at home safely because you don't need to energize it. Here's an example. I'll turn the beeps down on the meter because they get a bit annoying. You can see the actual readings across it change as the continuity changes. Once the switch is open or closed, you can see the continuity change. So here's the back of some grid switches where you can see the wiring. And I just test between the switch live and permanent live. Every time you press one of these switches, it should either turn on the light or turn the light off. And so like I've said, we can test this without any power and you can practice your wiring at home. And you might be thinking, well, can I bring my switch live and permanent live in to the intermediate switch? Will that work? Well, we can, you can wire it up and test it and see if it will work. You could wire it up and test it like I've done here. And you'll find that that will work. It's always good to have a bit of a practice before you start doing something new. And then you're confident you're not going to get into any bother. Anyhow, thanks for watching this one. I hope it's been of some use. Cheers now. Bye-bye.